Всем привет! Меня зовут Уали и добро пожаловать снова на мой канал. So, this is going to be a doozy. I recommend grabbing a snack and a beverage of your choosing. You might want to even get an adult one if I'm keeping it real. And also just a bit of housekeeping. I would really appreciate it if you could make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. The YouTube algorithm is very impressive and will recommend you videos from channels that you're not even subscribed to, although you think you are because you get all their videos. So if you could double check to make sure you're subbed if you want to be and please turn on notifications because I do not have a set schedule y'all. I've noticed a lot of views on my channel come from accounts that aren't subbed. So I would like for some of those people to jump on the bandwagon or something. So I think overall the feedback for my video about Athens was pretty good. I will link to it up here if you haven't seen it yet. I did an in-depth judging of the all around. It was a lot of fun. I had different results than the judges did. So that's always interesting. And so I felt inspired to do the same thing for the 1989 World Gymnastics Championships in Stuttgart, West Germany at the time. This was the very first world championships to be held after the introduction of new life rules which meant that the scores from the team competition would no longer carry over into the all-around final. Prior to 1989, half of a gymnast compulsory and optional from the team competition would be added to their all-around final total, and that was what would decide the medalists. And it's a very good thing that the scoring changed when it did, because our winner, the iconic legend, Baginskaya Svetlana Leonidovna, she took a tumble off beam during optionals and would not have won had she had to carry over that score. Had the prior year's rules been in place for this meet, her teammate Natalia Lashionova would have won. This was also the very first year of a new quadrennium and a new code of points. Typically scores are sometimes lower the first year of a new code as everyone gets comfortable and familiar with it, but this was not the case in 1989. I mean, the scores were in the stratosphere. It felt like every day was Halloween for the judges in Stuttgart. I mean, they were giving out tens like it was candy. So many people complain about all the tens that were given at the 88 Olympics in Seoul. Well, the judges didn't miss a beat. They carried right on over to Stuttgart like nothing had ever happened. <laughs> I always feel like tens should be similar to abortion, rare and legal. <laughs> That's not what was going on in Stuttgart, nor were the tens a representation of actual perfection, as I think they should be. They can also be used as a place marker. Uh, sometimes they just have to be used that way, but I prefer to see tens used to evaluate a routine that is a cut above and really shows mastery of the exercise with no visible deductions. So unlike my 2004 video, we will be paying much less attention to the actual code of points itself. Skills were still only valued from A to D, A being the easiest and D the most difficult. The bonification for this code required five tenths to obtain a 10-0 start value. It was exceptionally easy to do. Nearly everybody started out of a 10. Subjectivity ruled the day to an absurd degree if you think about it. And all day we're going to see this subjectivity come into these scores, both in terms of what I score and with what the judges scored back in 1989. And of course there were deductions listed and special requirements given, but I would be lying to you if I said that they were strictly adhered to or adhered to at all in some cases. So as I go through these routines, I will try my best to explain why I am giving the score that I am. There were far fewer set parameters than we saw in 2004. A lot of it was just based on vibes. For this quadrennium in particular, there was something called score mitigation that was going on. And what you would see was in instances of exceptional difficulty and or originality, 
that execution deductions would be offset if a gymnast had the issue on a very difficult skill or a very innovative skill. Artistry was also very important in 1989, and that was something that the judges were looking for, and I also think they used that to offset issues sometimes if needed. The scoring itself was incredibly tight during this quadrennium. The scores of one or two judges could totally influence the placements because the difference between a 9.95 and a 9.962 could easily decide who finished on the podium and who finished right offside of it. So we are actually going to look at the top six gymnasts in the all around at this meet. So we're going to go in descending order of placement, but we are going to show the event that they started on. So when we get to the end, we'll be on the event that they finished on in real time. So the first routine we're going to take a look at is Svetlana Baginskaya on bars. And praise be, I'm reunited with Monica Phelps again and it feels so good. has to come into the competition having just seen a 10 from the Romanians. That's like red rack to a Buginskaya, just giant fool. It's a Tukachev, nice high Tukachev. She got a 10 on this routine in the team championship. And really... She's beautiful form. Look at this, toe on, toe off. And she upgrades her dismount. She goes for her full twisting double back and she sticks the landing. And that took so much courage because there was no guarantee that she was going to land this. I've seen her have really bad landings on this before and the form is not the best but she was able to find the landing and stick it, even if she landed with one foot behind the other. So my score for this routine would be a 995. That is also what the judges gave her, a 9.95. And next up is Natalia Lashonova, mounting with her front tuck. She has to take a step out of it. And Natalia has beautiful form, back handspring to a layout, spectacular. Ooh, another little wobble there on the turn, but the height on that layout was incredible. Beautiful combination of leaps, three leaps in a row. The flexibility on all of them was at or above 180. Love that forward roll into that wolfish jump. <laughs> Here she'll do a back walk over into an immediate layout step out. That takes so much power. Lashonova is one of the most innately powerful gymnasts I've ever seen in my entire life. And as you can see, she is setting up for her dismount. She may be the only one of the few gymnasts, if not the only one in this meet, going for a full twisting double back, which, wow. Slightly over rotated. The thing about this routine is it had a lot of difficulty and it had a lot of variety and originality. I love this routine. <laughs> It was very creative, very different. The polar opposite of cookie cutter or stock. So there were a few balance issues, but in the end, I give her a 9.90 and her actual score was 9.875, meaning she counted two 985s and two 99s. And now we move over to Olga Strasheva on floor, her Strajeva iconic the ride of spring. Union, starting a competition on floor. The choreography of this is unreal. It's one of my all-time favorites. Emotionally involved in the competition. And 
sometimes they don't portray the charisma that they apparently the skills are very characteristic of the original Nijinsky piece mounts with the full in good I think it's probably more preventative than uh, trying to prevent an injury than I love how she covers her arms, the kicks, the knee grab. It's really like she's putting on a performance, honestly. Here she does a layout, Arabian 1 and 3. Double turn is where she sometimes struggles. Love that. Soviets will always repeat skills so you get the maximum impact. Dismount, tuck double back, a bit of a cowboy, and a bit of a insecurity on that landing. But the, <laughs> the ending pose is phenomenal. The choreography is just magnificent, out of this world, stunning, breathtaking, I love it. But because of the issues that I mentioned, you saw the cowboy on the last pass, the double turn wasn't the cleanest, and neither was the landing on her dismount. I give this a 9.95. Her actual score was 9.962. And now we're moving on to Christina Bontosh on floor. And she is just like a stick of dynamite. Double layout. She flings it out a little bit, but she can save that landing. There's a much more controlled double turn than we saw Freddy from Olga. In the European Championships last May on this piece of apparatus in the final. But I think she's a bit ahead for most of the routine in terms of her interpretation. We'll see in a few years' time, Hamala Guenya is chef's kiss. But you saw that. She did a full twist and double back, back handspring, back the other way, into a tuck double back. But this is all pleasant. And I think I said Malaguena, I meant Malaguena, of course. That routine in Barcelona is a stunner, but she's just not quite there yet. I feel like like that jump was a little bit awkward, but she has all the difficulty with to tuck double back this now. Very nice routine. So I had this at 9.95. And the judges awarded it with the first perfect 10 of the day, which I just feel like it's just a little bit too high for me. And now we are watching Yang Bo on uneven bars. China, now this new little star is really something special. I hope to goodness that I haven't put the kiss of death on her. She stalled her. The shoot over, she bent her knees. I don't know if that was intentional. It probably was. She doesn't have quite the same difficulty as some of the other gymnasts, and she kind of struggles with the Giants. Um, not the best swing, but she had really good form on the tuck double back dismount, but she had to take a hop forward. So I have this at 9.90, and the judges have her at 9.875. And our last gymnast of the first rotation, Chen Seiting. Love that. It's almost like a headstand mount, headspring mount. And Chen shows some beautiful skills on this beam routine. Watch this. She'll do back handspring into a high layout step out. Another back handspring step out. She doesn't have quite the same rhythm as her teammate Yang Bo, but you'll see it's beautiful flexibility on the switch leap. She has good choreography. 
beautiful straddle jump into a Sassone. She has good amplitude, good flexibility. She has all of the trademark Chinese characteristics. And there is her incredible eponymous skill, back handspring to a back tuck swing down. Unreal. It's a very, what we call a bottling So I am just pretty much obsessed with this routine. Round off, tuck double back, beautiful form and toes, legs glued together, toes pointed, just the smallest of hops backward. And one more look at this beautiful skill that would be named after her called the chin. Of course, it is not anymore. It has been taken out of the code of points because the FIG is racist. <laughs> so I think things will become apparent how lenient I am on each apparatus when I compare gymnasts to each other. But for that routine from Chen, I thought was pretty spectacular. Again, the only significant deduction really was that small hop back, but I think she more than made up for it with her exciting chin skill. And I had it at 9.95. Her actual score was 9.90. Uh, Svetlana begins Skya on balance beam. Running punch front mount, same that we saw from La Shionova, but she lands quite low on it. It's her flight series, two layout step outs. It's a small waiver. So split leap into that TikTok. So nice to see that she put in a Jim Acro series. Pavinskia always produces some very unusual shapes. Exactly. Monica is dead on. Beautiful shapes, beautiful regality, regalness, elegance. A gorgeous full turn. Monica's cracking me up. She watered down that pass. She just did three back handsprings. She usually does uh, a layout step out at the end of that. But knowing this code, she didn't need that difficulty. Round off, tuck, double back. And that is what matters is that landing. That's the last thing the judges sees. And that is an exclamation mark at the end of the routine. It's funny because I feel like the commentators are kind of making it this routine worse than it was in reality, honestly. I think they just expected more. Other than the small wobble on the series, there really wasn't that much to take for, unless you're going to deduct for her mount, which was original. So that's, you know, kind of overrides itself. I have this in a 9.95, as did the judges. And next up is Natalia Lashonova on floor. This is another, <laughs> it's like just icons everywhere. This is her iconic in the hall of the Mountain King routine. And her mount is, I think, worth the price of admission alone. <laughs> Watch, she'll do round off, back handspring, double layout, back handspring, straddle jump, punch front, round off, back handspring, tuck, double back. You have to be absolutely straight and blended vertically to be able to work on out of it as she did. Nice leaps. Everyone will tell you that Lachonova's major flaw on floor are her tuck double backs. They are 
far too cowboyed. Here she does high whip to a duh, another tuck double back. And at Soviet National, she was performing a whip to a full in second pass. That really would have helped disguise one of the cowboy tuck double backs. So I wish she had done that here. Again, dismount, another high cowboy tuck double back. The last landing was a bit out of control. But other than that, it's such an exciting routine. I had this at 995 and the judges had her at 9.987, which is crazy. It's crazy good. I mean, I can definitely see her getting a 9987 for that. So next is Olga Strasheva on vault. And I think this is the first vault we've seen. Typically, I will just show the better of the two vaults. She does lay out your chinka full. Good landing, just a small shuffle, but I like the power in that vault. I thought she did a good job of staying straight and holding that layout position. Uh, I, I really feel like the scoring is going to get kind of wacky here, especially on vault and beam, I would say. So I actually have her vault at 9.95. The judges had Strasheva at 9.962 for that vault. Bone Tosh is one of the few gymnasts who performs two different vaults. She's going to do this your chinkle layout full. And you can really see the pre flight issues there. And she landed very low and forward and piped down. But for her second vault, she really goes for it. Double twisting your chinka. Great vault or good power anyway. She has that same uh, parting of the legs on the pre-flight as Monica says. Um, and she has to take a pretty big step back. So all things considered, considering how difficult that vault was, that kind of makes up for the pre-flight issue and the step. So I had her second vault at a 9.9. .9. And the judges had her at 9.875, meaning two judges gave her a 9.9 .9 and two judges gave her a 9.85. So now Yang Bo on balance beam. And this is such a treat. I think Yang Bo is one of the best beamers I've ever seen, if not the very best. Stunning amplitude on that leap series. <laughs> She's in complete control of every singular movement. Watch this, back handspring, layout, step out, Rolfova. The height on that, the control, no cheating there. <laughs> That is the originality we want to see. Front aerial, right into a scale. She didn't connect that quite as smoothly as she typically does. And then quite a bobble on her signature Yang Bo jump. Just more difficulty, two layout step outs, above and beyond. If I had two words to describe Yang Bo. The critical thing is that she wobbled on a little jump. She's landing all of the difficult skills, but. It was more than just a little jump, Monica. Tuck double back, dismount. As, as she typically does, she lands a little bit short and hunched over, forward, unfortunate. Despite the innovation that she shows in that gang bow jump, it was still a pretty significant bobble. Not her best work for sure. There were a couple other tiny little deductions as well. So I gave her a 9.9 .9 and the judges also scored Yang Bo at 9.9 .9 on beam. In our last That's performer Chen. during Three the second team. rotation, Chen Sei Ting. I love this routine. 
started off with on beam, so... I legitimately well, think Karita Mohilan, she was the most well-rounded gymnast ever from China. Look at the power there. High whip back through a pike's full in. Plenty of room to spare on the landing. Good flexibility on the leaps. Have a fresh look about them. Hair well pulled back. Just a little bit of makeup to sell their beautiful faces. That Monica is such a mess. But <sighs> again, high whip through to a tuck double back. Beautiful form. Perfect. And the choreography is different. It's fresh. Beautiful round off straddle jump. Oh, and she's really expressive in feeling this music. Unfortunately, really overcooks that double turn. <laughs> I just love that. And then dive. Like, every time I watch this routine, the more I love it. She almost has to slow down into her tuck double back dismount. Glorious. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, too bad about that double turn. Because of that double turn, I have to have this at a 9-9 because it was a pretty significant mistake. Now, the judges <laughs> on the floor, I mean, they were feeling a bit more generous. Her score was a 9.937. I guess they love the routine as much as I did, <laughs> or a couple of them anyway. A couple judges scored that at a 9.95, which to me is kind of hard to justify, honestly. And our first look at Beginskaya, third After rotation on floor. Two rotations. The Let's music, <laughs> Rafael and Cara's Fiesta. After all these years, this might be still her most famous piece of gymnastics. Very tall, one Pikes full two. in, beautiful hurdle. Back this choreography is avant-garde, next level, and unreal. One and a half twist step out through the double twist. Beautiful. After being by the Kathy same Johnson baseball. called this routine angsty and disarming, and it is that. It's so much. You can feel the pain and the anguish, but she was able to make such a beautiful routine out of it. And, you know, the passing of her coach. I am just in awe of this routine, honestly. The guitar playing is just so different, but so cool. Now that was a beautiful double throw at the end. Well, no words. The most thing that I've ever seen very, very, the very expressive. Hands, hands very down, the most artistic routine of the entire meet. And this is where I give my first 10 of the meet. And the judges also give this a 10. Here we are in the third rotation. This is kind of where I thought things started to get weird. Here's Lashiona Von Vault. Her first vault, she lands low and takes a tiny hop back. Yet that gets a 10. I don't know about that. <laughs> The vault is just spectacular, but is it a 10? Now, thankfully for her, she got a second chance. So watch, this is last year of a second vault. That's how you do it. <laughs> That's a 10. I have that at 10. The judges have that as, as a 10. The judges had both of her vaults at 10. 
which, you know, she had started off on a 9875. So, I don't know. The conspiracy theorist in me kind of wonders about some things. If they were trying to push her onto the podium with that, first of all, getting a 10. And then we'll see what happens on bars as well. And Olga Strasheva is on bars. This is actually one of my favorite routines of the entire competition. Love that front flip over the bar, right back down to the low bar. And then that Shaposhnikova up to the high bar. Into a Zapiked Ganger. She has a very creative, you know, set of tricks. <laughs> Gorgeous to Kachev. Now, she really went for this dismount. She threw her full twisting double back. But she landed so short on it, and that is, you know, Kelostima, such a pity. And Monica says a tenth at the most. The judges were, you know, right on with her on that because Strasheva scored a 9.925 on bars. Two of the judges that counted have her at 9.95 for that. I have her at 9.90. Next up for Christina Bontosh in the third rotation is her weakest event, uneven bars. Although she does a pretty good job here. There's giant full to Kachev, which is flat though. Not a lot of height or amplitude. There's just not really a lot to sing about this routine. Although that was a nice ginger. More difficulty than some. Tuck double back. Bit of a flex feet and a hop backwards. I scored that a 9.9, .9, as did the judges. They also had her at 9.9. .9. And here we have Yang Bo now, on floor Bo. in the third rotation. 9.9 .9 on beam. And that combination that she performed there to be the highlight of the whole championship so far. And for me, this routine does not have any of the charm that we just saw from Chen. It was a nice pike full in though. But I just don't find this music very suiting of her personality. And I just don't think the choreography is as good, basically. Whipped double full. But, you know, she doesn't have that problem with the double turn that Chen did either. I mean, this is kind of reminding me of Bontosh on floor. It's just uninspired. Maybe even more so. Chosen something a little bit neater just to support those ankles. Those bandages do nothing to actually nice tucked double back. Lovely, chirpy routine though from her. But there really wasn't much you could fault from that, aside from the whole, you know, bad choreography thing. <laughs> but I don't think the judges really deducted for that or they actually liked it. Um, I almost felt obligated to score this 995 and the judges had her also at 995. Our last gymnast in this third rotation, Chen Se Ting on vault. We mentioned on floor, she had a surprising amount of power. Same thing holds true on vault. Uh, she has kind of a funky hurdle and run. <laughs> but it works. Look at the height, and she sticks that landing. I mean, it's, this is just such a peculiar run. We have to look at it again in the hurdle. It's just so odd, but she does get a good push. She fights to not get too piked, and she pretty much finds the landing. I had to give this based on what I had given Strasheva and Bontage, really, a 995. 
and the judges also gave her a 9.95. So our final rotation, Vaginskaya on vault. Nice. Full twisting, lay out your chinka. You see that John Taylor says there's no movement. Um, he must be blind because she clearly scoots those feet back. However, as with Lashonova, they give her a 10 anyway. <laughs> Second vault. You'll see again, she has the same strong run. Good push. And she finds the landing. But she really has to compromise the integrity of the landing position in order to do so. She lands... Very, very, very low on that. But despite that, she did stick it. This, of course, was the same world where Dude Nick always landed her double twist in Yurchenko really low and scored a 10. But that, of course, had the extra difficulty to mitigate. But I still would give the second vault from Begin Sky a 10. Just because I'm feeling generous. <laughs> it's not Lashion of a level, but it was a pretty good vault and she stuck it. Despite the issues on landing, I would still say it was better than Strasheva's vault, who I had at a 995. So when I add up Beginskaya's all around total, I have her at 39.90. And that is what the judges had her as well. And now we move on to Lashionova on uneven bars. She's a great bars worker. Look at the nice high to Kachev. Good handstands. There's a ginger, but you see that leg separation there. It's a nice stalder. And then tuck double fly away. She did stick it, but there was a bit of a cowboy and we saw the leg separation on the ginger. But the judges somehow give this a 10.0 also, which really makes me think they kind of wanted Lashionova to be second. I have this at 9.95. So my all around total for Lashionova is 39.80. I have one tenth of a point separating Beginskaya and Lashionova. And I have her in second place as the judges did. And now we have Strajeva ending on the precarious beam, which if you remember the year before, this is where she tore her ACL at the Olympics. Back handspring, back handspring, layout step out, a little bit of a step out of it, and also a little bit of a knee issue on that layout, it looks like. This is my favorite part. Beautiful one-arm handstand. And that Healy turned down to the beam, and then that the little oosh does across the beam. She has so much style and panache. Shador. There's the kick. Very strong. You can see that Olga has gorgeous wrists and arms. Most gymnasts choose to work barefooted on feet. It's another series. Oh. Oof. Back handspring, layout step out, back handspring. Again, a little bit knees untidy on that second back handspring. But she did do two series, which is good difficulty. And neither one of those errors were disastrous. Round off, tuck double back, which two steps and a hop back. <laughs> but honestly, I just felt like I had given Lashonova a 9-9 on beam with similar errors. So I scored Strasheva a 9-9 on beam as well. But however, the judges scored her a 9.925, which 
Again, two of the judges having this at a 9.95, again, feels like an overscore. And this becomes very, very important once we watch the next routine. I have Olga at 39.7, which puts her into third place at the moment. The judges gave Strasheva 39.774. And next we have Christina Bontosh on her last event balance theme. And just sit back and enjoy this. Back handspring, back handspring, layout, step out, layout, step out. Beautiful form. There's a full turn and kind of an arabesque. Her leaps are not the strongest, both in terms of flexibility or amplitude. Here's back handspring layout step out, pike back. Good save. And sometimes her knees can get a bit wonky. I like that move down to the balance beam though. I really feel like she throws everything in the kitchen sink in this beam routine though, and she really attacked it. Switch, switch leap. And then I love the little kick out. <laughs> so cool. Although neither one of those switch sleeps made it to 180. But I like the little flourishes. I like the choreography. I like the arm movements. And she does a unique dismount combination as well. Round off back handspring, tuck double back. And perfect landing. Mm. So good. So I had this at a perfect 10 because when all things were said and done, there were imperfections in this routine, but considering the routines that I have given 995s to, this was a half a tenth better. I had to give this a 10. Three of the judges counted a 10, one judge counted a 995, meaning her final score was 9.987, which sucks <laughs> because had that one judge scored her a 10, she would have won the bronze medal. That's how close it was. I mean, honestly, in all reality, they probably would have tied for the bronze uh, mathematically, but you know how the FIG feels about tiebreaker so yeah I think that Olga might have just gotten screwed over in that case unfortunately so when I add up Bontosh's all-around score I have her at 39.75 meaning I have her in third behind Lashionova and ahead of Strasheva and Bontosh's actual score was 39.762 again only 0.012 behind Strasheva in that bronze medal. But all of these results are so close. Like each gymnast is, you know, a half a tenth and then a half a tenth and then a half a tenth. Like that's how tight it was. This result could have gone a myriad of ways. It was very tight. I personally have her on the podium, but that doesn't mean that she is a robbed goddess. It could have gone so many different ways. And last up for Yang Bo is on vault. And if we're going to keep it real, this is probably the overscore of the meet. <laughs> so she did fight for that landing and didn't show any movement, but let's look at the deductions on this. She does not show a layout position. She's way piped down. She lands very low and hunched over. I had to give that a 985. The judges scored that a 9.962. I, I don't know how. So I have Yang Bo's all around score at 39.60, which is in fifth place so far. Yang Bo's all around score from the judges was 39.687 and unfortunately the tv cameras did not appear to record chen Se ting's bars routine so we are going to have to watch it on home video
So watch here. She'll do a very unique check giant type skill. And then into Astral Jaeger, which was very close to the bar. But I love the innovation in that first skill off the top. Tuck double back, legs glued together, toes pointed, just the tiniest of hops. And despite how close she was on the regrasp of that Jaeger, I still have this at a 9.9. Her actual score was 9875, meaning that two judges scored it 99 and two scored it 9.85. And that means I have Chen Sei Ting at 39.7, same as I have for Olga Strasheva, which means I have them tied for fourth place behind Bontosh. Her actual score from the judges was 39.662. So such a tight, tight competition. I tend to agree with the judges Obviously, I have the same top two in the same order. It's just the third through sixth places that were so closely bunched and probably could have gone any way, almost. I do think Yang Bo probably got the most benefit of the doubt here. I really feel like Bontosh and Chen particularly got the short end of the stick here. So I would be very curious to see what you guys think. Uh, what were your scores? Who do you have on the podium? Do you think that Strasheva was a deserving third place? Should it have been Bontosh? Should it have been Chen? Uh, please sound off down below. Please hit that thumbs up if you like this video. I will see all you guys in my next one. Take care. Das Gorva. Bye loves.